Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so we will spend some time in understanding stamen and carpel but before that, so let us now look at the different parts of a flower. So now I have already given you an idea about the different sections or different part of the flower. So broadly in order to categorize all these different parts of a flower, a flower is divided into four walls which are arranged successively. What do I mean by walls? Walls means uh, uh, one circle of a particular thing. So it is considered that every flower has all the parts arranged in a concentric fashion. That means it is somewhat like this, one wall, two wall, three wall and four wall and that completes the flower. So what are these four walls? They are calyx, corolla, androsium and gynosium. So I am sure that the picture itself would have explained what I wanted to explain. So we will again go back through the same picture. So let us first talk about calyx. So what is calyx? Calyx are nothing but the sepals. So the sepals are given that the, the whorl and sepals are each of these leaf-like structure and the entire whorl of sepals is given the name of calyx. The next, so this calyx is the outermost whorl. The next whorl is corolla, that is the petal. So corolla is the name given to the whorl of petals and petals is the term for each of these colored structures. The third whorl is androsium which consists of the stamens. So all the stamens together, the whorl of stamens is given the name of androsium and the innermost whorl is the carpel, that is the gynosium. Right? So when I talk about calyx, I am actually talking about the sepals. When I talk about corolla, I am talking about the petals. When I talk about androsium, I am talking about the stamen. When I talk of gynosium, I am talking about the carpel. Right? Now many a times people get confused with the names calyx and corolla because both starts with C so they get confused. So you can remember the small memory tip, cas. Cas means calyx represent sepals. So cas. And similarly you can remember co. That is corolla represent petals. So cas and co. You can remember these terminologies just to remember what is calyx and what is corolla because I have seen that many students get confused whether calyx is for sepals or calyx is for petals. Right? So now these are the four walls of which a flower is made up of. Now do you understand now are you able to understand or visualize the concept of walls? Now if you look at a flower just take a flower in your hand and look at the sepals that is the calyx that is the outermost world you will actually see that the calyx or the sepals are the outermost thing. Inside that calyx are the layer of the petals and inside that petal you will see the layer of the stamens that is the thin structures and inside that at the center you will have the carpel. So that is why it is said that a flower is composed of four worlds. Right? Okay. So now we will discuss about each of these walls in little more detail. So we will start with calyx. So calyx is the outermost whorl as I already mentioned. Members of calyx are termed as sepals and that is where I gave you the uh, memory tip as cas. That is calyx for sepals. Green color, they are green in color obviously. They protect the bud which later becomes a flower. This also I mentioned before. So basically the function of calyx is more important only when the flower is not yet formed when it is in the form of bud. Types. Now depending upon the type of sepals or depending upon the uh, way sepals are present in a flower, there are two types of flowers, gamosepalous and polysepalous. 
So these are the two types of flower. A flower can be a gamosepalus or a flower can be a polysepalus. Now gamosepalus is derived of two terms, gamo and sepalus. Sepalus obviously means sepals. And what does gamo means? It means united sepals. So gamosepalus are those flowers which have sepals which are united. So example of a gamosepalus flower would be hibiscus. So this hibiscus is an example. So here you can see these are the sepals, right? So all the sepals are united to each other. They are they stick to each other. They are not like separate separate leaves. But when I talk about polypetalus, poly anyways means multiple. So polypetalus would polysepalus would actually mean free sepals. An example is rose. So in rose, if you look at the sepals, see they are all separate, separate. They are not connected to each other, right? You can see them each as an individual leaf-like structure. So that is known as polysepalus. Whereas in hibiscus, all of them are connected. So that is gamosepalus. So generally calyx are short-lived, that is the sepals are short-lived, they fall off as the bud opens. As I said before also, they play the most important role only when the flower is not yet formed, when it is in the form of bud. Now when the bud gets converted into a flower, uh, calyx do not really have a major role to play. So most of the time, it they actually fall off. So the their longevity is also not very high. They do not live for a very long time. So this is about calyx. So let us look at the next world that is corolla. So corolla is the world before calyx. That means if you start looking it from the outermost, it is next to the outermost. So it lies inner to the calyx. Members are termed as petals, that is the colored petals. They are bright colored. They, they come in a variety of colors in different types of flowers. In some they are red, they can be red, pink, yellow. Actually, there, there are a huge variety. They attract insects for pollination. So that is the most important function of uh, petals that is their beautiful colors attract insects and when insects come to them they act as pollinating agents and help in the process of pollination now here i am not going to discuss again in detail about pollination if you want to learn about it uh, or if you do if you are not aware of what is pollination please refer videos of um, reproduction in plants okay Again, here also depending upon the way how the petals are organized in a flower, flowers can be of two types, that is gamopetalus and polypetalus. So it is exactly as how we talked about gamosepalus and polysepalus. So here also gamopetalus would mean united petals. An example would be tulip. So here you can see tulip. So these are gamopetalus because if you see this, this is, these are the petals, right? These are each petal, but all the petals are united together. So it, I mean, you actually can't differentiate each petal separately. The entire flower is like joined, all the petals are joined together. Whereas in case of polypetalus, they have three individual petals and an example would be rose. In case of rose, you can actually uh, distinguish each petal from one another, right? In leaf, in a rose, you can actually take out each petal. So they are all independent of each other. They are all free petals. So that is about, so example of gamosepalus is tulip. So let us talk about the third world that is androsium. So let us see how does an androsium look like. So it is the inner world next to corolla as I said. So outermost is calyx then corolla and then in, inner to that is androsium. So where do we see androsium? Here these are the androsium. These together form the third world. Members are termed as stamens. So each of these, each of these structures, 
are known as stamen. This is the male reproductive organ as I mentioned before also. Now if we look at the structure of the of each stamen in detail, this would it would look something like this. So the first picture represents a stamen from the back side. This, this picture, the second one, represents the face of the stamen. And this represents the cross section of the stamen. So basically what it consists of, if you look at the structure of a stamen, it has a filament which is a stalk like structure. This filament is the same as this green colored filament and it has a swollen upper portion which is known as anther. Now if you look at the, I mean from the back side, if you look at it, you actually see that inside the anther, you actually have these pollen sacs, somewhere like this. So here if you look at the cross section, you actually see some sac like structure, some container type of structure. So there are four, four pollen sacs present here and inside these pollen sacs are present the pollen grains and pollen grains are nothing but the male gametes or the male sex cells. So this is how the structure of a stamen looks like. So here if you look at this picture, this, this is the filament, this is the anther and inside the anther, the anther is basically bilobed. That is there are two lobes. You can see here two lobes. If you look at the cross section, you actually see sac like structure which are called pollen sacs. Inside the pollen sacs, you have the male sex cells or male gametes called pollen grains. Okay, fine. So let us now talk about the fourth world that is gynosium. So this is going to be the innermost world. So this you can see at, as the innermost and the central world of the flower. The members are termed as carpel. So if you look at the structure of a carpel in detail, this is how it looks like. There is a swollen base and this swollen base is the ovary. Then there is a tube-like structure like this, which is known as style. And then the upper portion of the style is again, uh, I mean, a little swollen when compared to the tube. And this upper portion is called stigma. So stigma, style, ovary are the three important parts of a carpel. So this is how a carpel looks like. Fine, so now we saw the four different worlds which make up a flower. But now we will spend some more time in understanding in detail the structure of a stamen and a carpet because these are the two most important organs when we talk of reproduction. Because when we talk about reproduction, the most important things are the male and the female gametes. And these male and female gametes are present inside the stamen and the carpet respectively. So we need to very clearly understand these two structures. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.